Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to explain you on alpha oxidation. So basically in our body alpha oxidation is uh, needed for oxidation of uh, fatty acid which is called as phytonic acid. Okay. So today we are going to see the oxidation of phytonic acid. So that is phytonic acid. Phytonic acid oxidation. Oxidation. Oxidation of phytonic acid. So this phytonic acid is uh, basically it's a derivative of uh, chlorophyll degradation in our intestine or it may be a chlorophyll degradation in uh, animals which will eat grass like uh, ruminant, uh, 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 ruminant animals like cows. So basically what happens when you have a chlorophyll when, when you uh, consume uh, green leafy vegetables um, like animals which uh, eat grass chlorophyll part in that is fermented by the bacteria in the intestine chlorophyll is converted to phytol there is something called as phytol chlorophyll degradation chlorophyll is converted to phytol phytol by bacteria bacteria intestinal uh, bacteria especially the colonic bacteria colonic bacteria ferments this and converts that into phytol and the phytol is absorbed and is converted to phytonic acid phytonic acid that's how the phytonic acid ends up in our body phytol chlorophyll to phytol phytol to phytonic acid okay now this phytonic acid is a 20 carbon molecule it's a 20 carbon molecule speciality of this phytonic acid compared to other fatty acids that we see is Phytonic acid is a branched chain fatty acid. We need to take a note of that. It's a branched chain fatty acid, which is which has got 20 carbons. Now, oxidation of this branched chain fatty acid, it is a little different from beta oxidation that is going on commonly in our mitochondrial matrix. Let me first write down the structure of phytonic acid and then we can understand how the phytonic acid is oxidized in our body okay here is the phytonic acid I'm trying to write phytonic acid now it has got carboxyl group that is COO minus and then there will be methyl group methyl the branch point Okay, this is the phytonic acid. As you can see, there are branches here. So each branch has got this methyl group. And the problem here is you cannot conduct uh, normal uh, regular beta oxidation on this phytonic acid because the classic uh, way of numbering the fatty acid is see, this is the number one carbon, there is a number two carbon, and this is the number three carbon, third carbon. Now in the beta oxidation what happens? So the oxidation of the beta carbon will go on. Now you need to know where is the beta carbon. So this is the first carbon, second carbon is an alpha carbon and the third carbon is the beta carbon. Now in order to conduct beta oxidation, the beta carbon has got methyl group here and that's not possible for beta oxidation to continue because there is a hindrance. So beta oxidation cannot go on for this particular fatty acid. So this has to be processed initially. So what happens is phytonic acid which is a 20 carbon fatty acid that will be taken into the peroxisome. So initially in the peroxisome, this fatty acid is oxidized. So peroxisomal oxidation, basically this is initially oxidized into in peroxisome. In peroxisomes, there will be initial alpha oxidation going on in order to remove carbon uh, one of the carbon. So we need to uh, do the alpha oxidation. Here is the alpha carbon. This carbon has to be oxidized first that's what is the processing going on in the peroxisome. So how the alpha oxidation will go on? So first carbon, second carbon is the alpha carbon. So in order to take this one carbon here, so the alpha carbon is converted in, basically it is oxidized into hydroxyl group. Uh, I'm going to change, do this, do some changes here. So hydroxyl group is added. 
initially and this is done by an enzyme called phytanic acid phytanic acid hydroxylase hydroxylase phytanic acid hydroxylase this is an enzyme which adds hydroxyl group to the alpha carbon this enzyme adds hydroxyl group to alpha carbon now this hydroxyl group later it is further oxidized into keto group i'm going to take out hydroxyl group now and i'm going to make keto group here that is double bond o that will be already is carbon here this is the carbon c double bond o that's a keto group now further it is oxidized into carboxyl group during that process what happens there will be breakage of this bond this bond is broken whatever this particular carbon the first carbon is released as carbon dioxide and now your second carbon which was which we have initially written this as second carbon that was the alpha carbon now that alpha carbon will be now carboxyl carbon it becomes coo minus alpha carbon becomes coo minus and the first carbon is released as carbon dioxide and this particular process we call it as alpha oxidation alpha oxidation so alpha oxidation will go on in the peroxisome and initially it, it is initiated by phytanic acid hydroxylase enzyme initially and that that's what happens to your first carbon first carbon is released as carbon dioxide now second carbon becomes carboxyl group it means numbering will change now okay now the numbering will will be carboxyl group as the first carbon and the second carbon this is the third carbon this is the fourth carbon here sorry this is the third carbon this is the fourth carbon like that numbering numbering will go on now let's see which is the alpha carbon and which is the beta carbon second carbon is alpha carbon and the third carbon is beta carbon now so now you can conduct beta oxidation okay because there is no hindrance here for beta oxidation now in fact there is no hindrance from now for any beta oxidation because let me explain you why see in the beta oxidation where there are four reactions going on which i am going to make a video on that beta oxidation video maybe sooner or later uh, maybe sooner so in that there are four reactions which will act on the beta carbon and break this bond between alpha and beta carbon and it means you are going to take this out in each beta oxidation you are going to break a bond between alpha carbon and the beta carbon now whatever the molecule that is released here this is a three carbon compound that is released and this three carbon is a propionyl coa propionyl coa propionyl coa is released okay now at the end of that reaction so this will become carboxyl carbon so o minus all right so now let me explain what will have uh, how the further oxidation will go on so now your uh, uh, fatty acid that is remaining so it now you need to change the number uh, how the, the way the numbering is done so this is the first carbon second carbon and the third carbon second carbon is alpha carbon third carbon is beta carbon so no problem for beta oxidation so oxidation of beta carbon occurs breakage of bond between alpha and beta carbon will go on so we are going to take this out this bond is taken out and the molecule that is released this two carbon molecule is it is acetyl coa acetyl coa is released okay now again your third carbon became carboxyl carbon now the numbering again changes so this is the first carbon second carbon third carbon and the fourth carbon okay now the second carbon is an alpha carbon third carbon is the beta carbon this is your alpha carbon this is your beta carbon no problem for beta oxidation all the forced reactions in beta oxidation will go on and it's going to break bond between alpha and beta carbon now you are getting a fatty acid three carbon fatty acid this is the three carbon fatty acid here and that is propionyl coa propionyl coa now you have released one more propionyl coa there now this third carbon that is now it is a carboxyl carbon at the end of all the beta oxidation this is a carboxyl carbon so now if you rewrite the numbering so this is the number 1 number 2 number 3 and number 2 is the alpha carbon number 3 is the beta carbon no problem for beta oxidation again so oxidation now between alpha and beta occurs and the molecule that is released is a two carbon acetyl coa two carbon acetyl coa is released okay now your third carbon again becomes carboxyl carbon 
naming the numbering changes number one two three four number two carbon is alpha carbon number three carbon is beta carbon so no problem for beta oxidation so beta oxidation will go on so it, you are going to get propionyl coa again so you got a propionyl coa you got a propionyl coa so it means so each beta oxidation and now number changes this becomes your o minus so now the numbering is this is the first carbon second carbon and the third carbon second carbon is alpha carbon third carbon is a beta carbon no problem for beta oxidation so it will go on between alpha and beta carbon and this two carbon two carbon molecule released as acetyl coa acetyl coa now you are left with four carbon fatty acid and that is number one two three and four carbon this four carbon fatty acid this entire molecule will be released as isobutyl coa isobutyl coa now at the end of all this oxidation so initially what we have done we have done alpha oxidation to remove first carbon as carbon dioxide after that whatever the fatty acid that is 19 carbon fatty acid that is left it is and also note that that 19 carbon fatty acid at the end of alpha oxidation that we got is a pristanic acid it is called as pristanic acid 19 carbon fatty acid which has which has the branches is a pristanic acid and that pristanic acid is oxidized all this is an oxidation of pristanic acid so pristanic acid is oxidized into 3 propionyl coa 3 acetyl coa and 1 isobutyl coa okay so 20 carbon phytonic acid is initially converted into pristanic acid 19 carbon and 1 carbon is released as carbon dioxide that is done by alpha oxidation initiated by phytonic acid hydroxylase now the 19 carbon branched chain pristanic acid will undergo beta oxidation regular beta oxidation process in initially in the peroxisome later that will move into mitochondria need to note this so initially pristanic acid will undergo oxidation beta oxidation regular beta oxidation in peroxisome later once the chain length reaches 10 carbon at that time it will be taken into the mitochondrial matrix same regular beta oxidation will go on and will give you propionyl coa acetyl coa and isobutyl coa okay it means at the end of oxidation of pristanic acid that is 19 carbon molecule you get 3 propionyl coa 3 acetyl coa and 1 isobutyl coa now what will happen to the you, you know the now the make uh, what happens to the propionyl coa so propionyl coa will be converted to methyl melanyl coa methyl melanyl coa methyl melanyl coa is converted to succinyl coa succinyl coa and succinyl coa gets into tca cycle that's the fate of propionyl coa and you know the fate of acetyl coa acetyl coa gets into the tca cycle oxidized now what will happen to the isobutyl coa isobutyl coa by several reactions it will be converted to propionyl coa propionyl coa isobutyl coa is converted to propionyl coa propionyl coa as i explained now it is converted to succinyl coa because propionyl coa can be converted to methyl melanyl coa methyl melanyl coa to succinyl coa that is what propionyl coa to methyl melanyl coa and then into succinyl coa succinyl coa gets into tcs cycle so this is how phytonic acid which is coming from chlorophyll degradation in the intestine converted to phytol phytol into phytonic acid okay and note that this phytonic acid can become part of our fat adipose tissue so it means those who are consuming meat basically non-vegetarians they have got high concentration of phytonic acid in their blood compared to vegetarians because ruminant meat has got more amount of phytonic acid accumulated and if we consume that so we are going to get it of course even the vegetarians will also have phytonic acid and that's because chlorophyll in their intestine can be converted to phytol phytol into phytonic acid but comparatively non-vegetarians will have more phytonic acid than vegetarians and that's because of the consumption of ruminant meat because those are entirely dependent like ruminant animals like cows their food is like coming from plant source that is the grass which has got chlorophyll 
and they will accumulate too much of phytonic acid and we consume that. So how to degrade, how to oxidize phytonic acid? Initially it is oxidized into pristinic acid by phytonic acid hydroxylase. Later pristinic acid is undergoing beta oxidation and releasing 3-propenyl CoA, 3-acetyl-CoA and 1-isobutyryl-CoA. Initially this beta oxidation is going on in the peroxisome, later it is continued in the mitochondrial matrix. Now let's move on to see one of the disorder that is associated with this alpha oxidation followed by beta oxidation in relation to phytonic acid. Name of the disorder is Repson's disease. Repson disease. The Refson disease is because of deficiency of an enzyme called phytonic acid hydroxylase. So, see, this is the enzyme that is initially converting phytonic acid into pristinic acid. See, the phytonic acid, phytonic acid, which is a 20 carbon branch chain fatty acid, is converted to pristinic acid. And that is 19 carbon molecule. This is done by alpha oxidation, alpha oxidation and initiated by phytonic acid hydroxylase. Phytonic acid hydroxylase. Any defect in alpha oxidation, that is defect in alpha oxidation, that is commonly because of deficiency or defect in phytonic acid hydroxylase. It means conversion of phytonic acid into pristinic acid decreases. And that can lead to accumulation of phytonic acid in the tissues initially and later it appears in the blood. So phytonic acid content in the blood increases, phytonic acid content in the tissue increases and that will affect neuronal tissue. Most of the time Ruxell's disease, it is, it is going to be manifested with uh, neurological signs. Neurological signs and these neurological signs can be peripheral neuropathy, can be cerebellar ataxia, it can be retinitis pigmentosa. So this kind of neurological features you can see in Ruxell's disease and it means that is because of accumulation of phytonic acid and that is because alpha oxidation is defective and that is most commonly because of deficiency or mutation in a gene coding for phytonic acid hydroxylase enzyme and that's related with the Ruxell's disease. So it means you need to avoid in Ruxell's disease patients need to avoid consumption of dairy products, milk and milk products. You need to avoid consumption of anything that is coming from ruminant, like ruminant meat has to be decreased. Okay. So this is all about phytonic acid oxidation, alpha oxidation followed by beta oxidation. I hope uh, you, want to, uh, you understood phytonic acid oxidation. Thanks for watching.